It's been more than a year since a sriracha shortage was announced in the U.S., and it doesn't seem like supplies are going to ramp up anytime soon. The American manufacturers of the popular Huifang brand says it has no estimates on when the chili peppers it uses for the condiment will become fully available after severe drought in Mexico, where it sources those peppers heavily limited supplies. So, for more on the sriracha shortage, we are joined by Griffin Hammond. He's a documentary filmmaker and director of the 2013 documentary, Sriracha. Look, I know there's a lot going on in the world, and I know that people are thinking about the 4th of July and getting food. We had a whole segment yeah. on, like, the cost of food, yeah. right? But for some of us who use sriracha every day on nearly everything we eat, yeah. with maybe the exception of salads, and I'm not sure that there's not some people out there who put oh, it on Oh, you could put it on salad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what is causing this shortage? And I guess the larger question, if you step back, it becomes more... It's less about sriracha and more about climate change and what's happening in uh, in Mexico. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a rolling problem that's been happening for years because the peppers, these red jalapenos, are harvested every September. And so last summer they were experiencing drought, but they were already dealing with a shortage the year before. So they had to fulfill orders when they finally got things harvested in, in last September. Uh, so they already started the year in a bad place. So it makes sense that, you know, halfway through uh, this year, they're, we're, we're already out. They're, they're out of peppers. They can't make any more bottles. Now, when we're talking about a shortage, we're talking about a particular brand. We're talking about Hui Feng, which is like the classic green top, clear bottle with the red sauce. Yes, a sir, sriracha, and I learned how to say, the, say it properly, sriracha, from your documentary. Yeah. Um, yes, you can find other people who make it, but we're talking about the, the one that everyone- With the green top and the with, red- with, like, Yeah, but of... we're talking about the one that everyone wants. And, this, <laughs> and there's so another layer to this, right? This company had yeah. to pay out millions of dollars in a lawsuit uh, with their former farmer from in 2019. Is that having an impact on the shortage as well? I mean, their their former suppliers certainly think so. This mm. was Underwood Ranches. They had a 28-year relationship with them, and in 2016, they ended their relationship. So when I shot the film in 2013, I saw the whole production process, but these red jalapenos were grown in California, not far from the factory. Uh, and now they've moved all their production to several different growers in Mexico, and these are the growers that are impacted by the drought conditions. In fact, I spoke with Thomas Walsh, yesterday at Underwood Ranches, who says that their crop has not been impacted for the last two years. So this isn't an industry-wide problem. This is really a grower-specific problem for Hoifang Foods. So why aren't they looking to another grower or even another pepper? Um, mm. uh, I mean... What? Are you talking? what? <laughs> another pepper? That's not <laughs> sriracha, then. That's something else. I mean, school, school this young man. Okay. Please. Yeah. So, uh, yes, please school me. <laughs> Anne Marie, I think you're right that, yeah, you need the red jalapenos. I think David Tran has a very specific uh, recipe for, for his sriracha that he loves. Uh, and it, it's hard because other sauces, other products in the market uh, may have a longer timeline. They may source their peppers uh, five years ago, and mm. they're only now putting mm. them in bottles. Uh, when, they're, when they've been aged long enough. Uh, Hoifang Foods has a pretty quick turnaround where they're bottling them right away, and so they can run out much quicker. Is, is, I have a follow-up to my mm -hmm. question. Um, is sriracha as popular as it was? No R. Sriracha. Sriracha, <laughs> look at this one. Schooling me all day long. I have, I have. Uh, is is, is, um, <laughs> is sriracha as popular as it was five years ago? Because I feel like, it's interesting in my house because I, my wife is uh, uh, Asian American. Like I was aware of this many, many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. Before all of a sudden it started to become a thing where people mm -hmm. were putting it on everything that they eat. And just like a lot of foods, as you know, you guys both know, like there's a, there's a, you know, everybody wants it, and then yeah. you know, it's like the hot honey phase, like three years I ago or whatever. I think it's still hot, no pun intended, um, because <laughs> and even though there are all a variety of hot sauces out out there, I think it's a, this all-purpose condiment that yeah. kind of like ketchup. You put it in everything, yeah. You know, yeah. So, so and, and it's cheap. Good point. <laughs> Good but point. is it going to well, stay cheap? cheap? That's part of the documentary, right? That uh, the popularity well, that is based on price. He wants to keep it low, but I wonder, is that going to still happen? You know, our, our producer, uh, Aubrey, said she went on Amazon. She saw it for, you know, selling for $20 
a bottle on what? Amazon. I didn't even see it on Hong Amazon. Hong Kong like, supermarket I, no. in Chinatown. You but get I saw all these other brands, but I didn't see the American made. Oh, I see. You know, got the it, one that it, everyone it. wants. I mean, is there a risk that this people are going to be priced out of their sriracha need and then like move on to something else? I mean, I feel like for Hoi Fung Foods, this is you know, as far as problems go, this is a decent problem to have that people love your product so much. Um, I do think demand has probably gone up. When I made the film, they were growing 100 million pounds of peppers every year, uh, but they were growing every year. Demand was going up. So I, I'm sure that's part of the problem here is that demand is higher and they need even more peppers now to meet uh meet demand hmm. can i i know we have to like wrap up uh griffin but i want to like i want to throw you a t piece of trivia that i learned from your doc here's a question do you know why there's a rooster on the bottle oh i used to know this um and i, and I and it was so cool. not just from the doc but i also saw an article yeah, about this you, i can't remember okay but uh, but i'm yeah go ahead the answer is uh, well, David Tran, a, a refugee from Vietnam who started doing all of this in the, you know, 1979, uh, he was born in the year of the rooster. That's what I thought, because I'm also born in the year of the rooster, but oh. I wasn't sure. I didn't want to make it all about me. No, 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 no. That's really do, interesting. But like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, wait, Griffin, Griffin, what's your favorite food to put uh, sriracha mm. on? You know, it's it's not very exciting, but probably just regular Italian pasta. I Ooh, actually, I never actually did it last tried. night. I <laughs> don't think I have. I have put it on pizza. That's my favorite pizza. What about Eggs. you? Eggs. Eggs. Listen, my, I, I I come from the West Indian, right? So my Scoville level is much, much ah, higher than Sriracha. That's so that's just basically like just a general just like sauce a condiment, for me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just put it on <laughs> eggs. Hey, Griffin, it's great talking to you. That doc is really cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.